Bailey here from unhappyyourcookie.com with our week three postpartum exercise video. So quick disclaimer, this video is intended for information only. Um, this video is not intended to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any injury or illness. It's not intended to prescribe any specific exercises to any specific person. Um, I highly recommend that you talk with your healthcare provider prior to starting any new exercises, especially if you are postpartum or pregnant, um, just to make sure that they're appropriate for you and your body and where you're at. Um, so this video is really just to give you ideas, um, tips on form if these are exercises you're already working on, um, and just kind of let you know what I'm doing to help get back in shape to start running, hopefully here in a few weeks. So. This week I was able to add in um, a bunch of standing and other positional exercises, more kind of traditional body weight um, strength training exercises. And so I ended up splitting my workouts into core days where I do more of the ones that we've talked about previously, and I'll show you the progressions I've made on those. And then on the other days I do more of like kind of a real workout um, with some of the other exercises um, to work on, start working on building up strength as well as just getting those muscles back to working again. So I want to start with the ones, uh, progressions of ones that I've already shown you, and then I'll um, go over some of the new ones here at the end. So laying on my back. So last time we had gotten up to level 1A on the heel slide. So that was where you were gently drawing in the belly exactly to that. stabilize the pelvis and then um, straightening one leg out hovering and coming back in and alternating back and forth. So I was able to build up to 30 of those and progress those to a level 2 which is where you start with your legs in a tabletop or 90-90 position and then straighten out one leg from here. So kind of like a half bicycle movement, if you've ever done a Pilates class, looks kind of like that. Um, starting out the first day, really just aim higher, like I was aiming for the ceiling with my foot, and that makes it easier. And then as I got comfortable being in just this position and moving from here, I was able to extend a little more horizontal and work my way down to about this angle. So right now I'm doing about 20 in a row, kind of around this angle, um, and plan to keep building up to 30 from there. Same thing with the marches. So last time we had built up to a 1A where you come up, up, down, down. So this time um, built up to 30 of those and then was able to progress to level two, where you start from here and you're alternating, touching one foot down from the top. And here again, I started um, by kind of touching the foot really close to my bum, which makes it easier, and then progressed to keeping, trying to keep kind of that 90 degree angle knee bend and touch down with more of a movement from the hip, less of a, less of a movement from the knee bending. Uh, so again, currently at about 20 of those at a time, building up to 30. Now the bridges, I progressed to lifting the hips and holding for 10 seconds. I got up to 20 of those, and uh, 30 of those just takes too long for my patience level. So progress those to the next level, which is a bridge march. So where you lift the hips up, and then you try to barely pick up one foot off the ground, and then barely pick up the other foot off the ground. You just kind of march back and forth. And these are a lot harder because the tendency is for the hip to drop down as the foot comes up, which is where you've lost that strength in your glutes. So really pinching the butt cheeks tight together the whole time and thinking about driving your heel down through the ground as you lift the other foot really helps to turn on and keep those glutes fully engaged, keeping the pelvis nice and stable as you march back and forth. Once I got up to 20 of those feeling pretty comfortable, I did go ahead and progress them to um, kind of a single leg bridge. So again, coming up both feet and then straightening out one leg at a time. Same thing goes, just really focusing on keeping the glutes really active on this one. And these are a lot harder. I'm only up to about 10 or 15 in a row of those before 
I start to get a little dip when I go to pick the leg up. And so then it's time to come down, take a break. Um, the adductor squeezes. So the ones where you're just squeezing in on the roller. So those got a lot more comfortable um, pretty quickly. And so I progressed those to adding a little bit of a um, oblique activation. So hands behind the head. The goal with this one is to keep those knees squeezed in on the foam roller the whole time. And then just trying to lift one elbow up towards the opposite knee while keeping the other elbow down, glued down to the ground. So this elbow is pushing down into the ground. The other elbow is lifting into a little bit of a twist. And then down. Twist. And down. And you'll notice I'm not coming up very far. Um, I don't really want to overwork the rectus abdominis muscle yet. Um, I'm really trying to get the deeper layers of core muscle um, uh, a little more toned and working stronger first um, before I try to really crunch up in anything. I don't have any diastasis recti at this time, but I did following my first pregnancy. And so I'm just extra cautious about the connective tissues uh, in the abdomen and trying to really get those core muscles, deeper core muscles stronger before I add in any um, uh, crunching or sit up type exercises. So go into the opposite direction, same thing, pushing down with the elbow, lifting the other elbow just gently to where it feels comfortable and back down. Also added in um, modified side planks instead of the sideline hip abduction. So was kind of finished with these ones and have moved into a closed chain uh, modified side plank. So knees bent down on the forearm, coming hips up. You want to be in a straight line from shoulders to knees. So a straight line here, not dipping the hip down, but also a straight line as in you don't want your hips, your butt sticking out in the back or your hips rolled forwards or backwards. So I want everything lined up perfectly straight. Held this for 30 seconds the first day, did a couple of those, and then was able to hold it for a minute each side um, yesterday. And so next week I'll try to move into a full side plank. Um, that'll be the next progression. Okay, that's all the laying down core kind of ones. So the ones that I added in, still working on the single leg heel raises, building up to, trying to build up to about 20 of those on each side. And then I added in a little single leg mini squat. So I like a three way variation just because it challenges my balance at the same time. So the way that looks is, I go sideways there, skating on one leg, balancing on one leg. Other leg is gonna reach out in front as you sit back in your hips and come down into a little tiny squat, coming back up, then this Leg is gonna swing out to the side, same thing, sit back in the hips, little tiny squat, come back up. And then this leg's gonna to move to the back, same thing, back in those hips, little tiny squat, and then come back up. Trying to hover that foot in between each one really works those hip stability muscles. And so I was doing about eight of these per side, um, slow and controlled, really focused on that standing leg, not letting the uh, knee come in front of the toe, or kind of the knee to buckle in, or the hip to drop down, um, any of those clunky movements, trying to keep everything lined up and level. Ooh, it's a good balance challenge. Okay, also added in mini lunges. So starting both feet on the ground and just dropping straight down here and back up. Going within a comfortable range and doing 10 to 20 on each side. These are a nice way to kind of assess your hip flexors and see, and quads, and see if you've got any extra tension in those, which I feel like I always do, because that back leg, you get a nice little stretch as you come down there, as long as you're keeping your pelvis tilted under and not letting it arch out. Okay, then, use the chair for a couple of things this week. My old trusty folding chair. So added in some arm stuff. Tricep dips can be done off the edge of a bed 
a chair, a stool, a table, whatever you got. I've been doing them with both feet on the ground, legs straight, dropping the butt straight down towards the floor, and then pushing back up. So doing around 20 of these in a row, hoping to build up to 30, and then I'll start trying to do single leg up and down. That'll be the next progression. Also added in with the chair um, hip thrusters. So edge of the chair, bed, whatever, right about the level of the bottom of your shoulder blades. Walk those feet out. Gonna let the hips drop down and then push straight up towards the ceiling. So really squeezing those glutes, get a little bit of work in the quads, just down and lift. And again, doing about 20 of these at a time. And then the last one I added with the chair is just a push up. So again, you can do this on the kitchen counter, a bed. I was doing them on the crib rail the other day, um, just wherever you are, finding something that's about waist high, um, up to shoulder high. The higher the object you start on, the easier it's gonna be. And then you wanna gradually work your way lower. You can make sure your form stays good and you don't lose that core support as you're going. So walk the feet back, clear a nice straight line. Want to keep your hips oh, under, not let that lower back arch. And you're gonna just drop the chest straight down towards the chair and then push straight back up. I've been doing wide arm ones, um, so letting the elbows flare out as far as they want to. But you could also do a narrow elbow version where you tuck your elbows in towards your side. Since I'm doing tricep dips already, I've stuck with the wide version, which focuses more on the pecs and the biceps versus the narrow version, which focuses more on the triceps. Um, keep that tummy tight. Also keep your um, neck straight. So think about keeping the chin slightly tucked so that you don't end up cranking the neck every time you come down. You wanna keep the chin tucked a little bit so your nose is pointing down the whole time. All right. And that's it. So able to add a few things this week and do some more fun kind of actual working out, which is exciting. So I hope you guys are all doing well and I uh, hope that gives you some ideas of new things to try and ways to progress what you're already working on. So I'll see you next week with more fun exercises. Thanks for watching. Bye.